for my first vlog or update, whatever you want to call this whole thing. I just want to thank all the subscribers and for the, the people who subscribe in the future, just to let them know what this channel is all about. This is to complement my main channel at uh, youtube.com slash justmakeit. And I wanted to create a place where all the videos that didn't fit with my main channel could be. Uh, and that's ones like my uh, my lumber rack update, the, the planer incident video that I did. Uh, I just, at this point in time, I don't think it's suited there, even though those will likely stay in that spot. But uh, any future videos I do and just rambling videos kind of like this one will end up in this place. And it's, uh, it's a pretty popular and common thing that some YouTube woodworkers are doing and I, I think it makes sense so I'm just gonna follow suit and do the same. So Mike from the Geek Pub sent me an email yesterday saying uh, hey I featured your lantern build on the weekly Maker's Digest on his website thegeekpub.com and uh, I went to check it out and it was pretty cool to see you know, a project I did on, on somebody's website, but uh, his website that he put together is just fantastic. It really looks good, and uh, to complement his YouTube channel, which is quickly becoming one of my favorites. So that's, uh, that's definitely a website I'm going to check out more often. So go check out his, uh, his website, his YouTube page, and if you haven't seen the video of the DIY pallet wood jack-o'-lantern build, um, go check that out too. So with this uh, with this jack-o'-lantern build it was sort of a test for what I wanted to do with my channel and it's um, it's never been my intention since I started less than a year ago I think it was last February uh, 2015 that I, I created the channel and it wasn't my intention to be a tutorial based sort of channel um, I sort of liked what I saw with uh, Woodworking Barcelona, for example, and how it's just, you know, music playing in the background and you just, you watch him work sort of thing. And uh, check his videos out. They're beautifully done. Uh, the music is great. His work is great. Videography, everything's fantastic. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed making them like that. And I figured, you know, there's enough tutorial based. It's, it's not something that I need to do. And also because this isn't something that I ever intended and still don't intend on making a, a full-time thing. It's just, it's easier not to have to put in dialogue to a video. If you can just sort of focus on the work, uh, minus moving cameras around and stuff like that. But rather than talking to a camera or recording audio. But uh, that being said, I, I watched um, Jimmy Diresta and if you don't know Jimmy Tyresta, I, I don't know where you've been, but he, he frequently does videos for Make. And the last couple that I've watched on Make, he's um, he does a little voiceover, some dialogue to them. And I've always thoroughly enjoyed Tyresta's videos, just like anybody else has. But I realized that I, I really enjoyed hearing his feedback about the project. You know, even if it wasn't necessarily a tutorial, it's just him talking about it. So that sort of inspired me to maybe try and change things around and so yeah this uh, this video was a test and I I enjoyed doing it. It wasn't that much more difficult to add audio. I mean it is a little more time consuming but I think with uh, the way it's been received that it's something that I'll, I'll keep doing and uh, it'll be something that I'm going to tweak. I mean you know, there's all sorts of things that I could have done differently and done better and and that'll just, that'll improve as I go on too. And there's always the time factor, right? Anybody who who does anything in front of a camera knows that it is pretty time consuming and you've got to be willing to, you know, if, if you got an hour long project, it's probably going to take you many more hours on top of that if you're going to film it. So who knows? It's uh, everything's work in progress and we'll see what happens from there. So with that being said, um, now this was the lantern that I had made for the video. And I'm not sure if it's the project specifically or the new format that I did it, but the, the video seems to be pretty well received, you know, in the short time that it was up, um, 
I'm basing that opinion off of the, the likes and the comments I received in that short period versus my previous videos. So yeah, I don't know if it's this, the new format, combination of both. I, I don't know. We'll see, I guess, with the next video <laughs> if it's... Uh, if uh, I still do the voiceover, but the content's not as interesting, we'll see what happens there. So I had mentioned, uh, I don't remember, I think it might have been in the comments, that I was sort of employed by my mother-in-law to make some for her. She liked them and wanted me to do them. So this is the three right here. I just finished putting a second coat of poly on. And I've got a heater sort of giving them a quick bake because I'd like to send them off with them today so they can hang them in time for Halloween. So as you can see there is a bit of a difference. Um, now what I wanted to do differently with uh, between these guys here is aside from different faces I wanted to do you know make it a little interesting is because I was doing this for myself or for somebody else I wasn't uh, feeling obligated to make it a minimal tools project so I used my radial arm saw, my table saw and my planer as well and the boards that I had left from that particular palette that I used for this were pretty severely cupped and I didn't want to you know try and mangle those together so I just shot them through the planer uh, so that's why it, it is a little bit thinner as you can see there and also, um, you know, I put nails on the top instead of the screws. I kind of like the look of the nails anyways. The screws sort of take away from it, I think. Uh, put a few more nails in here. And that's pretty much it. It's not quite as dark. Uh, the burn, the torch that I used in the video, it's a discontinued torch now, and it uses this weird short quarter turn tank and you can't buy them anymore. burns matic they, I, I don't know why they did it, but you know, they, they put the thing out then they stopped making it. So it's basically a, a big paperweight right now. And that thing, it did pretty even coats, or not coats, I guess, uh, pretty even burn marks. It had an even flow when you're trying to scorch the wood. And halfway through the first one it just it crapped out on me so I used my other one which has a little pencil flame tip and that thing is really hard to get some even burning with it just you can sort of see on the sides it's a little blotchy so I need to get a new a new torch uh, for the future because I, I am going to do some more stuff with wood burning and I'll show you an example shortly here um, so yeah, I did that. Uh, obviously, you can see that the, the color is slightly different, you know, and every time you mix up some of that pigment, which is this stuff here, it's going to be slightly different shades. It is going to be different. Um, I do like that it's not so dark. It gives it more of that natural wood look. And uh, it probably is going to darken over time just because it is a urethane based finish. It's going to yellow or amber over time. So it is going to get a little bit more of an orange hue as it goes on. But uh, yeah, I really like how the, you know, the second batch turn out. And, you know, when have you ever produced something that always looks best the first time around? I don't think that's something I've ever done. It's always, I make something for myself and it turns out okay. And then by the time I get around to making it another one for somebody else, it's like, I always get the prototype stuff and everybody gets, uh, you know, the perfected or, you know, as it goes on. But hey, that's, uh, that's the way it goes. And for anybody who's interested in maybe trying to tint their own finish, um, essentially what I guess I made was my own version of uh, an oil-based poly shades. And if you're not familiar with poly shades, it's basically, well, I guess poly shades is the Minwax version of this, which it's, um, it's a basically all in one finish. And so it's stain and polyurethane in one. And it doesn't, it doesn't get into the wood like a, a regular oil based stain would. It just sits on top and it creates a film finish. And, um, you know, so you love it or hate it. I think it's got some, some uses to it, but, um, 
yeah, it's personal opinions, I guess. This, however, when I put this into my the polyurethane or spar urethane in this case, it essentially created the same thing. It's just uh, it's a film finish, a tinted color. Um, but I like this because it's easier to um, easier to apply. If you don't apply that poly shade stuff properly, it can look like crap, like just absolute crap. So what I did with this batch actually is I, I thinned it out a little bit just so it brushed on a little better it wasn't so thick uh, it just went on smoother and I, I got some pretty good results so you could do really any color uh, I got this at Michael's which is a craft store and I said in the the description bar that this is a, a pure linseed oil base and the pigments where is it so yeah, it says vehicle, pure linseed oil, and pigment. Arlide, yellow, pyrrole, orange, and that's it. So that's the, the two things. So yeah, just mix it in. So in the future, I'm going to try and just mess around and see what comes out of it. And uh, yeah, I don't know, kind of, kind of neat to do anyways. Oh, so if anybody's interested, this particular stuff is... The brand is Windsor & Newton, and it says Winton Oil Color, number four, cadmium orange. And I think this was like five or six bucks Canadian dollars. So if you guys are in the States, it's going to cost you even less. We, we Canadians like to pay more for everything. So going back to the, the burning, the wood burning and burnt pine, uh, I said it's something that I've been playing with, and... What got me curious about it was um, I sort of stumbled across a Japanese technique for burning wood called, uh, what is it, uh, Shusugibon or Shosugibon, something along those lines. Um, and basically what they do is they just, they scorch the wood, it's for exterior applications and it helps, uh, helps weatherproof the wood siding. So they torch it with a, a stiff bristle brush, they scrape off all the, the burnt crap, and then they basically bathe it with um, like a tongue oil. And this helps preserve the wood and keep it going for longer. So I was more so interested with the, the aesthetic that it gave. So I wanted to try messing around with things like, uh, like pine. And I've been asked to um, to create a, a coffee table and a sofa table and stuff like that out of uh, possibly pine top. So I thought this would be a good experiment or a chance to experiment with wood burning. And I'm going to bring this and you know show them what I come up with and see if they like it. So I put together. You can see that it's uh, you know multiple two by fours, basically all edge grain sort of thing. And what I did is one side, I, I burnt all the wood, you know, pretty even. It's not quite as blotchy as that. I spent a little more time burning this. And then I gave it a, a light sanding to uh, just to even it out a little bit more. And then I stained on top of that. I wanted to try a color that I have on hand just to show them if they, uh, to see if they like it. So I stained over that. And then I, uh, I made my own wipe on poly, just 50% mineral spirits, 50% polyurethane, and just wipe that on multiple coats to get a nice smooth finish. So that's what it looks like. And without, excuse my, uh, my crappy sanding here, or well, yeah, my crappy sanding, but also the crappy finish because it's just, just a color sample. I didn't spend too much time, but this is without. So without burn, with burn. And I think it's, uh, I don't know what it looks like on camera, but in person, I think it's very apparent the difference that it makes. This sort of seems flat and just not much contrast in the wood. And this, it sort of, it seems to make the grain pop out a lot more and make it a lot more interesting. So, uh, yeah, that's... I'm hoping that they, they like this because I'd like to do a whole table with the burnt top look and uh, go with that because I think it's a pretty interesting 
You know, pine is sort of relatively boring wood, especially white pine, uh, which this is. This is yellow pine. You can see how the grain structure is very different between white pine and yellow pine. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you compare it to stuff like maple, oak, walnut, cherry, whatever, it, it's pretty boring wood. And I just, I wanted to look at ways to make it more interesting because the, one of the reasons why it's so popular is because it's uh, readily available just about anywhere and it's inexpensive. So, I mean, it, it gets used a lot. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm doing right now. And I guess I've talked long enough. I've probably lost half of you already. So, uh, yeah, until next time, I'll uh, probably give updates more often than I put out videos on the main channel. But, uh, you know, see you next time.